How much usable fuel do you really have in the Carbon Cub EX3? I've done this on every plane so far, and uh, it's something that I really like to do. Now, obviously, I'm just uh, just weighed the plane to get the final uh, weight and balance on it. Um, so, or I'm get, getting ready to. So, what I'm doing is finding the true unusable fuel. Now, in the Carbon Cub EX3. Uh, they say it's the usable fuel is 39 gallons out of 44 gallons. You got 22 gallons on each wing with both tanks in each wing. And they say 39, so you got five unusable. How much is really unusable? Well, now I'm just gonna say that I'm not an aircraft engineer and I'm not a test pilot and I don't know how this all works for sure, but I understand that you know fuel is different when you're not in a static environment, but more in a dynamic uh, environment where you're moving or turning or accelerating or climbing or so forth like that. So I, I know that would be a little different. So it's probably calculated on how much fuel is uh, actually uh, available to the engine and, and the worst maneuvers, I guess, that you could put, to, put them in. You can see here the gasolator is right here. Um, uh, and water and fuel's coming out. I got a drum here marked, so I'm, I'm measuring how much fuel is coming out. All right, so start over. What I did is I put, this is a two and a half gallon fuel container, and you see I've marked it one and a quarter and two and a half and a, a half. So what I did is I took two and a half gallons, I put them in each tank with the fuel selector off, okay? So with the fuel selector off, obviously some fuel is gonna go down into the drain lines, and you see there's the left tank just starting to sputter. Okay, it's just exactly the same as my, I've already done the right tank. So I put two and a half gallons here, two and a half gallons there, fuel selector off and leave it off. Make sure it's always off from the very beginning so you're keeping the fuel in those systems. Then I go over and I test and make sure my drain here has got fuel in it. So it'll test that you shouldn't have anything coming out of the gas elators. You can lock this up. You can see as I've done here. So you should have fuel here and you should have fuel out of your back drain here, okay? So you should always have fuel available here, even of course with this in the off position. So it's in the off position. You can see what I've done here too, is I take blue paper towels. I don't put my interior panels in until all this is done with my fuel. Obviously we tested the lines and the fuel system before, but I take blue paper towels and I stick them underneath that fuel selector. See underneath there, underneath all the fittings that are all right here. Then I go up to the top, I leave these panels off until after I've got this fuel in. So I've done the same thing here. You know, I put paper towels, I'm gonna leave this fuel in here overnight or maybe for a couple of days and make sure there's no fuel coming out. Obviously these would probably leak immediately and you can run your finger on them and see the blue. The fuel selector I've talked about previously, there's problems with some of the fuel selectors with the O-rings being dried out uh because they haven't been used so what happens in the fuel seeps there's little balls with o-rings in there and when you turn that valve those little balls have uh, detents in them and those o-rings if they've been dried out they get a chalky substance in there and then it begins to leak and it does not leak fast enough for you to see it readily it's a slow slow seep and then where it usually shows up is you see you got a stringer right here so it seeps out of there it lands on that stringer and sits there. And then on the outside, it'll eventually go through and it'll bubble your paint on the outside. So about two months later, you'll see it. And like I say, it's not a big enough leak, you'll notice it. But I'm gonna leave that here to double check it. When I got this fuel selector, they sit on the shelf a lot of times, I'm told, and they'll dry out. Those O-rings will dry out as they sit on the shelf for a long time. So it's best to open those up and clean those O-rings uh, or uh, uh, just replace them with new O-rings and put a O-ring uh, uh, sailor uh, grease on it, O-ring grease, um, which, which you can get. Uh, I've got another post on the forum that actually shows how to do that, how to change those O-rings those O-rings out. You have to be careful, there's little springs and little balls uh, in there. So we put it in, you put that into a bag when you remove it so that those, if those springs fly off and the little balls fly off, you can find them. I've lost my little balls before, so I got made fun of. All right, so now we've got that in here. Okay, the next thing while I'm over, I'll just kind of show you. So while I got two and a half gallons in there, I go up here and I put a little Sharpie mark. 
See that line right there? That little blue line? That was two and a half gallons exactly. And and I did the same for the other one. So I, in each case, I know where two and a half gallons is. This is a level flying position. So that's kind of cool. I know exactly where two and a half gallons is. Now, I put two and a half gallons in each tank. Now this one's on the left tank. Then I go in and take the fuel selector. I turn it to the right tank and I came over to the gas elevator and I drained all the fuel out. I got exactly what I got here out of the right tank. Both tanks ended up giving me back that much gas. I put this much in there. I got this much back out. And when you figure it all out, which I'm not smart enough to do without a calculator, I put in the left and right, I put two and a half gallons each. I got back 1.8 gallons. That left me 0 0.7 unusable each tank. Okay, so I've got 1.4 gallons is my true unusable fuel, 1.4. Okay, now I know they say five, and I suppose you should plan for five, but if, uh, if you're ever really worried about it, or if you ever want to test it out over the airport or whatever, uh, 1.4 is a true unusable. So if you take that from 44, what does that give us? 40, uh, 42.6 usable instead of 39 so that's another three and a half gallons of a usable fuel which we can probably stretch out to a good 30 minutes if we uh, need to somewhere obviously you don't want to ever run down that low but at least you really know now if you do get caught in a jam and that's how i do it so i'll take this two and a half gallons i'll turn it back off here Okay, it's a good time now you can check, make sure everything shuts down, go and you check your drains, make sure nothing here is dried out either. And uh, I'll take this two and a half, the rest of this and put it back in that left tank. And uh, I'll go switch the uh, selector off again. And then I'm going so they don't cross drain. If you've got them on both, they'll cross feed from one side to the other. So I'm gonna turn the selector back to off, put this back in there. So I still got two and a half and two and a half. Then I'm gonna take and put, two and a half more here and two and a half more there because I want to mark my fuel site gauges again with a five gallon mark. So I want a five gallon mark and I'm going to have a two and a half gallon mark just on my fuel site gauges. And, uh, and that's it. And then the last thing I'll do is uh, probably today or tomorrow, I'll go out and start the engine. And when I start the engine, you know, I run it a, a very small amount of time, the least amount of time as necessary uh, on a new engine you just want you don't want to idle around and spend a lot of time basically i'll i'll start it uh, pull it out the hanger i'll start it run it up just until it's running nice and smooth and then i'll shut it down i'll get out right quick and i'll go check everything for leaks and make sure it's good if it's good then i'll take it and i'm about a half a mile taxi down the runway to the fuel uh pump i'll taxi it down to the fuel pump and as i'm going down there i'll be dragging my brakes so i can burnish them in i want to burn the paint off of the rotors you see the rotors all have paint on them they say to sand it off yeah, good luck uh just drag your calipers down the runway and by the time you get to the end under this will be rubbed off okay and at the same time then you're burnishing your brakes in so you just lightly drag those brakes all the way down the runway to the fuel pump and then I get fuel. And now what I'm doing is I know I've got five gallons and five gallons. I've got 10 gallons in here total, right? Less the little bit I've used just to start an engine and taxiing down there. Then I'll top them off. I'll go turn the fuel selector to off so that I'm not cross feeding again. I'll fill this one. I'll go fill that one. Then I'll go back and check, make sure this one didn't go any down any back and forth. And I'll make sure it's completely topped off. And then I'll see how much fuel I put in the airplane. So obviously with the 44 gallons, max and i've got 10 already then i should be able to put 34 gallons in them at the fuel pump right so that lets me know do i really have uh, 44 gallons in my tanks so anyway that's the way i do that and uh, i think it's pretty cool and uh, i've always liked knowing exactly what it'll do i'm not wondering right